Yeah. Hello and welcome to this I'll Vote 21 online meeting for the Isle of Wight County Council seat of Parkhurst and Honeyhill. A brief word for the benefit of the public, I'll Vote 21 has been formed with the sole purpose of enhancing democracy by providing an unbiased platform for candidates. We have no affiliations or funding and no candidates are aware of what questions will be asked today although a list of topics was distributed in advance to enable candidates to prepare. All 138 candidates in this year's election have been invited, either directly or via group and party leaders. The following candidates have been invited to this meeting. Cara Locke, Conservative Party, Pauline Hunter, Labour Party, Andrew Garrett, Liberal Democrats, and Holly Fallick from the Green Party. And joining us today are Pauline and Andrew. Hello. Uh, candidates will be asked questions from our pool of questions, plus others that have been submitted by the public regarding island-wide issues and their specific locality. Candidates have been informed that there is a two minutes limitation on answers. I will raise my hand as we approach that cutoff and I kindly request that the candidates finish up promptly afterwards. Before that starts, Candidates have two minutes to give a personal statement. Um, Pauline, you're at the top of my screen, which means you're in first. OK, thanks, Stephen. I think this is more than two minutes, so maybe I'll put the rest in the conclusion. Maybe, maybe you'll see the hand. I'll see that. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Pauline Hunter. I'm very proud to be the Labour Party candidate standing for Honeyhill and Parkhurst. And my introduction is in four parts, I hope. Um, Firstly, about the Labour Party on the Isle of Wight. We've got a fantastic manifesto and as part of our pledge, we have a change that I think will benefit the whole of the island community. We pledge to boost the island economy by spending much more of the council budget on the island rather than the mainland. That might be an extra 50 million pounds a year. That's a million pounds a week. And we're really proud of that idea. And sorry that the Conservative Council thought it beneficial to the island to, to invest on the mainland. We want, for example, to support the regeneration of high streets by providing one hour of free parking. That's one way that might help. And we want to prioritise providing and building affordable council housing for local residents. We're ashamed that people should be homeless on the island. About me as a local candidate, um, I love the beauty of the island. I've lived in Newport here for over 30 years, my husband and two children. Uh, of course, they're now grown up. So I knew, know Newport itself well, and I know bits of Parkhurst and Honeyhill too. I taught at the college for several years. And a, a couple of clubs I went to met in the ward, yoga in the old Paddy Hill School and choir rehearsals in the Parkhurst Officers Social Club. By the way, what a great facility that is and a wonderful bowls lawn too. I like Newport Town Centre, I like what Newport has to offer, but I expect I share your concerns about what's happening to the town centre with a closure of shops following the pandemic pandemic and unbelievably in the county town, the loss of the post office. I've got two more sections. I'm going to have to put them in the main meeting. Thank you. I very much hope you have time throughout this meeting to expand on all yeah. your points. Uh, Andrew, you. please, please go ahead. Well, good morning. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Pauline, and everybody who will eventually be watching this at all, all times of the day. First thing I, I'd like to say, I just hope you are keeping well. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of the way which the COVID pandemic has had such a huge impact on, on so many of us, and it will continue to do so. So I am the current councillor for Parkhurst and standing for Parkhurst and Honeyhill, an extension of that ward. Um, I was elected four years ago, gaining the seat from the Conservatives. And in that time, I've, I've helped hundreds of residents. And two of the issues I think anybody across the island will, will recognise have been the St Mary's Junction scheme, the construction of £6 million worth of, of junction there. And of course, the prison estates, which have recently uh, seen a government agreement with the council to improve those. And that's something I've been working on since the moment I was elected. I turned to the chief executive and said, what can we do to improve the prison estates? Went on to lobby the MP, went up to 
the Ministry of Justice to lobby a civil servant. We made some progress getting new streetlights. And of course, this new this new deal will take things even further. Um, as a councillor, you deal with so many different issues from what I call the small, the, the little bits of this and that that affect only a few people right up to the big. And I've hoped that as a councillor, I've been approachable, available and, and one someone who listens and takes action. I'm standing for the Liberal Democrats and uh, we have a manifesto that is pushing three priorities, jobs and the economy, the enhancement of community relationships, and of course, tackling as we can, as far as we can through the Isle of Wight Council, the climate emergency. And that is my end of my first uh, statement. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, just so you both know, uh, the hand will go up around about 1 minute 45. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, Pauline, the uh, first question to you, please. Um, Andrew, yes, thank you very much. There's a little bit of noise coming from yours. It's okay. It, it's not It's not bad. It's only a little. Don't, don't worry. Uh, but Pauline, uh, the first question to you. Can you name one policy that the council should lobby central governments for? Yes, of course, there are rather a, a large number, but our focus perhaps is on housing and homelessness. And we want to invest more of our money on the island. So we'll have money that we've brought back to the island to invest in housing, affordable housing. And that will have the advantage of not only providing affordable homes for local people, um, but also giving opportunities for people to be employed in the building trade and for apprentices, I hope. So in terms of uh, housing, it would be wonderful if the government matched our investment in housing so that people who are, apparently there's been a big increase in homelessness on the island, partly due to the pandemic. So what we would like is more local building uh, of housing, affordable housing. Okay, thank you very much, Pauline. So same question over to you, Andrew. Uh, name a policy area that, uh, that we should lobby central government for. Well, I, I, I think the, the issue that has faced the council for the last 10 years, of course, has been that the, it's funding. Government has cut the funding to the Isle of Wight Council uh, severely and also has failed so far to um, honour on what seems to be a, 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 a long-standing promise, which is never to be realised from the Conservatives on an island deal. We are, uh, we have been cut as all local government has been cut in funding and we also suffer from something uh, that the University of Portsmouth has estimated as about a £6 million uh, premium on, in terms of providing services and providing investment. So I would agree with Pauline, focusing on housing would be one thing that could be achieved so much better if government would finally recognise that local government is the best way to deliver local services and stripping it of cash. Um, as it has, and taking services to a pale shadow of what they used to be has just been totally devastating for all of the country and particularly for the Isle of Wight. Okay, thank you very much. So we're back to the, another reminder of the island deal, elusive island deal. Okay, the next question might sound a little bit frivolous, but we think it perhaps gives an insight into, into the character of the, of the candidates. You have been given £20 million to spend on projects to revitalise the island. What springs to mind that would be of maximum benefit? And that's for you first, please, Andrew. So uh, I certainly don't think it's a frivolous question at all, um, because if we did have the island deal, we would be starting to move towards having those sorts of sums of money over the course of time to invest. So I think... Um, what I, I would like to see is um, certainly the exploration of, of delivering housing projects because they would not only um, meet a need um, that we have on the island in terms of, of housing shortage, but also uh, develop a, a, a part of the economy, um, help develop skills for younger and older people um, in delivering that. And I would add to that, um, the opening up of, of opportunities through uh, micro businesses, so putting money towards a small business. I think the COVID pandemic has shown that um, certainly on the island, there are a lot of entrepreneurial people who, in given the right circumstances, would develop a business, 
some of those businesses will go on to grow and employ a number of people and develop their skills. So I would I would put further money there. Finally, I would put a, a significant sum though into tackling climate change because so much spills out spills out from that, um, and much of the the ways in which we'll address that will, will be um, things that involve the development of the economy, but in an e e environmentally friendly way. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. So the same question for you, please, Pauline. Twenty million pounds for revitalisation. Yes, I mean, I, I know I noticed what was was said about cuts in our budget on on the island because central government has cut the money to local government. That's dreadful. But what what the Labour Party wants to do with its community wealth project is to invest in the island to use our money to generate income here and generate jobs rather than accept continual cuts in funding. We want to uh, bridge the gap in funding by investing on the island. 20 million pounds from the government will aid this. Housing is so important, and I think that's what Andrew has, uh, has touched on, I've referred to already. If we could invest in um, housing, we're investing in skills, we're investing in employment, we're giving people decent places to live that they can afford. And I hope we're doing it in a way to create attractive housing with open spaces, etc. But this would be a huge help to island people to have the security uh, of, of living in um, a place that they can afford and a decent place. Um, so that, that's one of our um, aims and it's one of the most important ones. I think it creates jobs and it creates homes and that's at the key of I think happiness really for people. Um, so that that's what we do with um, twenty million pounds. We put it into that to help with the house building. Okay, thank you very much. And like you say, there can be a virtuous circle from uh, from such things, can't there? I think so. Yes. Um, the next question is for you, Pauline. Mm. How would you work to encourage less reliance on motor vehicles and develop more sustainable modes of transport? Yes, of course, that would be a good idea. And, and we've got the idea of um, increasing uh, the number of electric um, car charging points across the island. Um, we've, we've also got um, information in about um, cycling as an alternative. So um, I, th I think uh, cycle lanes obviously would be very helpful. Um, and actually the government did put some money in to repair bicycles, I think. So that kind of thing will, is, a, is a green policy and I think that would help. Okay. Thank you very much, Pauline. The same question for you, Andrew. Um, encouraging sustainable transport, please. Well, uh, I think one thing that, um, that I discovered and, and a lot of people have discovered during the, the last year is um, during the lockdowns and when we haven't been able to be so reliant on our cars is that it is possible to walk and cycle considerable uh, distances if we are able to um, and enjoy the island and go about some of our business around the island. So we need to first of all tap into what people have discovered a, 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 about that. One area that we seriously need to implement is the local cycling and, and walking infra infrastructure plan. Um, lots of very good ideas in that for ensuring we have a comprehensive cycle network and a walking network. And maybe some of that 20 million pounds you offered me earlier, Stephen, could go into that. Obviously, in one of the worst things that happened to the island was the removal of the railway lines um, and if it were possible to restore at least some of that network that that would make a huge improvement it would take a, a significant and long-term investment from central government to achieve that but that would be great what central government could do to help us deliver uh, more sustainable travel is to allow us to uh, fund buses as we do in some cases to to, to subsidize buses but to allow buses uh, a, a much more su sustainable business model um, so that, that we could have routes that are properly going out to all parts of the island on a regular and, and frequent uh, timetable. Finally, though, we must remember that actually people do find great freedom from using their car and going places. And this is where the, the move as quickly as possible to electric vehicles is going to be so important and, and also hydrogen powered vehicles so putting the electric charging points in uh, in as many 
convenience points as possible is going to be very important. Thank you. Super, thanks ever so much, Andrew. And the next question is going to be directed at you first, Andrew. It's a little bit of a preamble, then the question comes. One in five people have a disability equating to around 28,000 island residents having some form of disability or long-term illness. What commitment will you give to reduce the inequalities for disabled people on the island with a view to improve facilities, services and employment for disabled residents and visitors? Andrew, please. So having been a chair of a charity that uh, worked for deaf and hard of hearing children, the Acute Speech Association, uh, you won't be surprised that, that, that this matters a lot to me. The first thing is the, the accessibility to services. So something that the, the, the council can make sure it's doing from the very start is in, ensuring that, that, that services are accessible uh, to people who are deaf and hard of hearing or uh, visually impaired. And I have heard of issues where, where still we send out as a council uh, communications which are in uh, the wrong type of font, uh, difficult to access, those, those sorts of things. More broadly though, it, it is a societal change and we have seen some of that societal change where there is a awareness uh, of, of the needs for accessibility for, for those with uh, the whole range of, of, of uh, disabilities, impairments, other sort of uh, limiting illnesses. I, I think this is where we need as an island to culturally take on board the fact that there is a lot of guidance out there from many different organisations and charities, uh, the Royal National Institute for Deaf People, the RNIB, uh, other, other charities taking on board and making it um, one of those things of pride that business and service providers are um, adhering to those guidance so that that people with who are looking for any sort of uh, engagement with an organization whether it's employment or service provision know that they're going to get the best best uh, standard of service possible super thank you very much andrew same question to you pauline about uh, a commitment to improve facilities services and employment for disabled people and visitors yes yes we are very committed to, to doing that. We're very aware that in the pandemic, mental health has been quite a serious issue nationally and also locally. And I think particularly men's mental health has been neglected and we need to be very aware of that. We lost a member of the Labour Party through suicide in the um, pandemic. I'm sorry. Um, uh, yes, it, it was tragic. Um, we, we very much want to improve the availability and quality of mental health services. Okay and we want to focus on well-being. Um, so we are very committed to that aspect. Um, of course, um, unfortunately, some people come through the school system with disabilities and we want to improve the quality of our special edu educational needs uh, provision on the island and put um, children first. Um, we, we really are proud of our community wealth um, project. Uh, the idea of investing on the island and we think this will create more jobs on the island and those jobs will be jobs that include opportunities for people with disabilities we also want to work with partner institutions and where possible raise the wage from the minimum wage if that is paid which it should be of course to the living wage and i think these aspects of our policy and the housing of course will help people with disability find decent home find decent work and also, um, a, a, of course, have a decent wage and all those things are very positive. But it's not a quick fix, unfortunately, and it, it needs a holistic approach and it needs to be worked on in the whole period of the, of, uh, the council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pauline. Just a personal comment from my side. I think it's a very... Uh... Uh, revealing statistic, isn't it, that there's 28,000 people on the island uh, with some form of disability or long-term illness. And um, when you see that, st that statistic, you kind of makes you wonder why isn't this more often front page news? 
Um, mm. There's 28,000 people who are not living their lives to, to their full ability or for some reason, and every opportunity needs to be given to them. So I think, yes. that, I think that that number needs to be on a billboard somewhere. It's my point. Yes. Uh, on with the show. Um, Pauline, there's, this question will be for you first. Yes. Oh, and sorry, I should note the last two questions and this question have been submitted by the public. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what will you do to address all the empty shops in each town? The main streets are dying. What should the council do to specifically address this issue? Yes, thank you. This is a, a huge issue. Obviously, in the county town, we've got a lot of shops and we've lost a lot of shops. It's quite a, a shock for me on Thursday when I went into Newport. We have a, um, a candidate for the uh, police and crime commissioner election, which is on the same day, and we met him, and it was a shock. So I hadn't been into town for a while to see how many shops were, were closed. Uh, we are very concerned about it, and we, we'd want to ask members of the ward what they think uh, a member was suggesting pedestrianisation would help. Um, one of our policies is aimed at helping, which is the free parking for an hour. It's just an initial policy, and it will help a bit. Um, and we'd abolish post 6 p.m. charges as well. Some shops in, in the town are open after six. What we want to do is support the conversion of empty shops into indoor markets and incubators for local startup businesses. It's very uh, pertinent to our idea about community wealth that we want to encourage uh, entrepreneurs, startups. Um, and we want to encourage some sort of diversity in the high street so we're not dependent on uh, just large um, shops. Um, we want to ban any future out of town developments um, so that we can try and improve um, the high street and improve the facilities of the town. And uh, our hub for tech startups might well be in the town centre. So we, we've got a number of ideas, but I think it's part of a national conversation about town centres in which we need to, to join because it's not just the island, unfortunately, that's suffering. Thank you. Thank you very much. And same question to you, Andrew, which is fundamentally about high street regeneration, something everybody wants to see. Well, first, can I say, Paul, in condolences to you for the for the loss of one of your Labour Party members. That is tragic. Is. And, and my, my thoughts are with everybody who suffered that, that form of loss. Um, so first, I'd say about Newport. Yeah, yes, there are a lot of empty shops and clearly a, 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 a lot of areas which need uh, bringing back up. But we are still vibrant in part of our streets, um, and that's because of a diversity of, of, of the offer there. So um, what I think of is when we could travel around the country freely, the places that I would go to, like Brighton or Bristol, where friends are, that you see this vibrancy. And what is most noticeable, it's people. It's people being able to be not only to shop, but be to be entertained on the streets or to enjoy the streetscape in, in ideally, more independent coffee shops than, 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 than perhaps the big chains, because that's where we've been susceptible to, to, to loss of retail um, through the big chains. Um, we do have the Heritage Action Zone, which is going to help to um, address some of the issues around the infrastructure, the building infrastructure. I think another, another area that we could work on is, and I think we've just seen this with an NHS announcement, is bringing service provision into the high streets so that doesn't just have to be a shop or a, a coffee place, a restaurant or whatever, but it could be the place where you access access a service. And that's where I'm slightly concerned about, well, more than slightly concerned about the Conservative proposal to knock down County Hall, because where would that go? And that's an important part of our, our high street, the, the number of people when they can work, they're coming out and sustaining a local economy. <clears throat> Finally, it's about government ensuring that certain services like the post office are mandatory for certain for, for certain towns, because that again brings people into our streets. Thank you. OK, thank you both. Very good answers. And uh, I, I very much look forward to uh, what happens with our high streets over the over the coming years. 
Um, mm. It's quite a nervous proposition, but uh, there, there's lots of wonderful ideas out there in, in the realm and they're seeing the country of fruition. Um, you have to excuse me for a second because um, I've had the, the dog has just run in, opened the door, the washing machine is on, and now she's underneath here <laughs> chewing cables. So Don't work goes, with animals, Stephen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> BBC, this is not. <laughs> It does happen so much there on all, all, all of our calls. Oh, that's why uh, amazing! Aren't you cute? <laughs> oh, she's lovely. Yeah. Uh, three well, if, dog, if, any, I... if anybody's watching, vote for the dog. <laughs> Just a second. Um, Pauline, are you enjoying the campaign so far? Yes, very much. As I'm really enthused about our manifesto, I think it is so good and helpful. And I, I just, I just hope we can bring it about. How, how about, how about you, Andrew? Oh yeah, very, very much so. Uh, the the opportunity to go out and meet people again has been enormously welcome. Obviously, mm -hmm. we have to do it in a COVID safe and secure way. But mm -hmm. to to meet with people that, um, um, as a counsellor, you can help directly. That that's always been my the driving force for for, for what I do. Anyway, Stephen, we'll hand back to you. We we took over. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's quite all right. I mean, this, this platform is being provided um, so that um, uh, so that the candidates are humans. They're not just pictures on leaflets. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I'd say ch chat away and I'll, I'll, I'll take care of the dog, you know. <laughs> uh, OK, so that's it. We're, we're very, very nearly at the end. Um, I almost feel uh, afraid to say we're very nearly at the end. Um, that's, that's, that's what it is. Uh, Andrew, there's final questions going to be for you, and don't forget you have an opportunity to wrap up after this, okay? Question is, knowing your local community as you do, what local issue would you like to address that you know is of concern to residents? Well, if, if I may stretch that a bit, there are, because my the, the ward I represent it has diverse issues, I would first of all stress that if I'm re-elected, it is making sure that the council delivers effectively working with residents on 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 the prison estate improvements that has that has been a problem for residents for the last 30 to 40 years and it is time that um, that, that their estates have got those improvements particularly the street lighting which is so poor across the area what i'd also like to do and we had a great uh, in, um, presentation from a gentleman for, uh, working with the biosphere project um, some of the little projects down in newport making them more environmentally friendly is being able to bring some of that up and through the ward so that we, we can connect the town to other green spaces to the river which abounds my ward to the east and the forest of course which which is actually by area the largest part of, of, of the ward and does have voters living in it, uh, although mostly squirrels and other, other life. So I'm very keen to sort of develop from a green perspective, the environmental perspective, the, the sense of pride and ownership of our communities all the way from our town upwards and through and then stretching on, of course, beyond our, our boundary to the north and to northwards and, and, and into cows. Thank you. First a puppy and then and then, then a mute incident. Uh, uh, Pauline, same question to you. I'll read it to you again. Knowing your local community as you do, what local issue would you like to address that you know is of concern to residents? Yeah, I think it's great living on the Isle of Wight. I, I love it and there are lots of positives. Um, so I don't want to give the wrong impression. And obviously Park, Parkhurst and Honeyhill have lots of uh, lovely aspects about them. Um, traffic can be a huge issue in all parts of the ward, I think, and pollution that comes with it and parking. And I think one of the issues we haven't yet uh, touched on is food poverty. <coughs> so I'm not implying that particularly affects Parkers and Honeyhill, but I think it affects the whole island. And I think we've got some spl splendid policies on that. <coughs> where we want to appoint a, a, a councillor <coughs> for food justice. Sorry. <coughs> Please take, take, take a break, Pauline, and uh, okay. grab a drink. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather you did that than, than struggle for it. 
Oh, absolutely. It, it, it's a kind of Zoom throat that you get in the end, isn't it? Uh, I, 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 I tutor um, as, as, as my job, and a lot of my tutoring has been on, um, on, 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 online, of course, for, for, for much of the last year. And uh, after, after a little while, the throat does get affected. And uh, um, it amazes me those who do actually spend their lives talking for a living. Um, and how they how they don't uh, lose their voices at the end of each day. Pauline, are you are you okay? Yes, sorry about that. <clears throat> yes. So the point I was making is how lovely it is to live on the Isle of Wight, and that Parker and Honeyhill are not singling us out as having this as a particular problem. But I very much like the Labour Party policy of having someone reviewing how our policies affect children and eliminating child poverty. Okay, that, that's, that, that's perfectly fine. Thank you very much, Pauline. I understand your point, uh, to, uh, a priority on uh, child poverty and food poverty, which is, uh, it's, it, it's remarkable that we're even discussing that, isn't it? Yes, yes, and of course, child poverty is being made worse sudden by, or poverty in general, by the um, pandemic. And we'll appoint a lead councillor for food justice and establish a local Food Action Plan. It is terrible to think that we are talking about people who can't manage to provide food for their family. Yeah. Oh, that is the case. I think we have universal agreement. <coughs> um, okay, so now it's time for the closing statement. Uh, Pauline, would you like to go first or would you like Andrew to, uh, to step in so you can uh, well, have an extra if, minute? If Andrew doesn't mind going first, I'll grab some more water. Yeah, but, that, oh, that's perfect. Uh, so of, of course, fine. of course. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, very, very happy to do so. So first of all, Stephen, can I, can I thank you and, and those who've been helping you organise this for, for going ahead with it? It's, a, it's a, a great initiative. It is a shame that for some reasons, maybe um, political and, and, and some through logistics that others haven't been able to, to join in all of them. But uh, I hope in 2025 you do have, have a, 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 a far, far more successful uh, uptake than, than, um, but it's been great and and what I reflect upon first is 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 what Joe Cox the late Joe Cox MP said that there's more that unites us than divides us um, and I'm, I'm sure Pauline and I have will have been spotted nodding along to each to each other and even if the other oh. candidates were here we would have seen the same well my final point is that from a board councillor perspective I hope people have seen that I am somebody who is uh, approachable because I live in the area pretty much everybody's within about 10 to 15 minutes walk the furthest is is, is a, a 40 minute walk away up at the at Mark's corner um, and that's the promise that I will maintain that I speak up for residents I, I terrier alike with with issues and as a councillor who has been a Liberal Democrat councillor on, on, on the Isle of Wight Council, showing what uh, Liberal Democrats believe in, a fair-minded, central, uh, moderate approach to things, looking at things through, helping all to achieve the best that they can, um, that uh, I would encourage people to look at our manifesto, where it is focused on jobs and the economy, community uh, and particularly on that other great crisis that, that's facing us, uh, the environment. But whatever people decide to vote, I hope they do vote. The, the, the franchise is so important and so few people do take make use of their vote in, in local elections. And I really, I would rather lose with a big turnout than win with a small turnout in some ways, although I'd rather win full stop. <laughs> Thank you. I understand what you're saying, Andrew. Yes, very, very much so. Let, let, let's let, let's boost the turnout uh, uh, from the, the net result of, of this project. If the, no matter what the political outcome, if the turnout it goes up a few percentage points, then I will be happy. Good. In some way, if I can accredit some of that to this scheme. Uh, we, we, we'll see how many people, how many people watch the videos. Uh, we, we, there'll, there'll be a big push from our side. Interesting. Uh, Pauline, please, your closing statement. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for Stephen and Arvite 21 for organising this. And it's been great to meet you, Andrew. I've really enjoyed it. I think we do share a, a lot of policies in common. Uh, and that's great. And the, the purpose of the Labour Party candidate standing in Parkhurst and Honeyhill, as well as I hope getting elected, is that we want a democratic uh, vote. We want a democratic society. 
when we look back only to December 2019, there were on the Isle of Wight 18, over 18,000 people who voted Labour. So if you are a Labour voter and you're living in Honey Hill and Parkhurst, please vote and please consider voting what you actually feel for the Labour Party. And also remember that there is a police and crime commissioner election on the same day. It's not first past the post. You've got a, you can have a one and two preference. And our candidate, Tony Bundy, is absolutely brilliant, and I really recommend you vote for him. If you are listening to this online hustings before Tuesday, which may not be the case, you can still apply for a postal vote. That is the deadline. And that's a really good way of voting, and, and that's how Alan and I vote. Uh, and you just go on to Google and put in applying for a postal vote, and you should get a link, but I'm sure there are other ways of doing it. Just in conclusion, our manifesto, with its emphasis on community wealth, will really make a difference to the island. We're going to bring back investment to the island. We're not having investment wasted, in my view, on mainland projects like um, warehousing in Manchester. We're having them here invested on the island to regenerate our town centres, not just Newport, but the other towns, to build housing and to create jobs and training opportunities. Got more to say, and I'm going to have to stop. Thank you, Stephen. That's it. Oh. If you have one more bullet point, jobs, opportunities, investment. Oh, it's not a bullet point. We want to work with our partners, the teachers, and we want to try and get a living wage paid by the main institutions on the Isle of Wight. Oh, OK, you. living wage paid by the main institutions on the Isle of Wight. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank you both very much for, for attending. Uh, um, I wish you both best of luck in the upcoming election and thank all you. your endeavours around the community um, subsequent to that. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.